would like to call to order the July 17th, 2018 Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Welcome, it's good to have everybody with us tonight. Uh, at this time, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are very happy to have with us tonight Reverend Carol Karkin from Central United Methodist Church for our invocation. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you call us to live in community to be mindful of our neighbors, of their needs and their dreams. We thank you that you raise up among us leaders with servants' hearts, with a diversity of gifts that can help discern what is best for our county, the place we call home, the place that we love. Be with us in this time of meeting as perhaps we wrestle over issues, grant us discernment an ear ever to the people in front of us who share from their heart and an ear to you that our community might continue to be a place where even the most vulnerable among us may thrive. We are grateful for the many blessings we enjoy in Cabarrus County and pray continually for the guidance and the sacrifice that our leaders exhibit. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Karkin. We appreciate you being with us tonight. We'd also like to welcome a new face uh, tonight that's with us, our new clerk, Lauren Linker. Raise your hand, Lauren. Uh, this is her second day in Cabarrus County, and so we're delighted to have her on board. Look forward to working with you. Okay, first on our agenda is the approval or correction of the minutes, and you all have a copy of those before you. Do I hear a motion regarding the minutes? Made for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes and we move to approval of the agenda, which you also have before you. Do I hear a motion to approve the meeting agenda as presented, including the changes on page 257. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move to recognitions and presentations. We are delighted to have Jimmy Lentz and Justin Brines with us tonight for a presentation. Good evening. EMTs and paramedics play a vital part in the system of care for those experience, experiencing heart attacks since they are often the first medical point of contact. They can save precious minutes of treatment time by activating the emergency response system that alerts hospitals to incoming heart attack patients. Every year in the United States, more than 250,000 people experience an ST elevation, myocardial infarction, also known as a STEMI, which is the deadliest type of heart attack caused by a blockage of blood flow to the heart that requires timely treatment. To prevent death, it's critical to restore blood flow as quickly as possible, either by mechanically opening the block vessel or by providing a clot-busting medication. The Mission Lifeline Initiative provides tools, training, and other resources to support heart attack care following protocols from the most recent evidence-based treatment guidelines. Mission Lifeline's EMS recognition program recognizes emergency medical services for their efforts in improving systems of care to rapidly identify suspected heart attack patients, promptly notify the medical center, and trigger an early response from the awaiting hospital personnel. On May 30th, 2018, Cabarrus County EMS received the American Heart Association's Mission Lifeline Gold Plus Award for implementing quality improvement measures for the treatment of patients who experience severe heart attacks. Cabarrus County EMS is dedicated to providing optimal care for heart attack patients, and we are pleased to be recognized for our dedication and achievements in emergency medical care efforts through Mission Lifeline. This is our fifth consecutive year being recognized by Mission Lifeline, and our first year achieving the PLUS criteria. 
I cannot emphasize enough how much this war award belongs to our staff. <clears throat> the level of dedication and commitment our EMTs and paramedics display in regards to providing quality care to our citizens and visitors is second to none. <clears throat> I would also like to acknowledge all the allied partners from bystanders to the telecommunicators who answer the 911 call, to the first responders in our various fire departments, all the way to the nurses and doctors and support staff at the hospital. This award recognizes all these individuals because quality patient care does not exist in a vacuum. While this award deals with cardiac care, rest assured that the level of detail required for this award is evident with every patient we care for. And I have the award here that we received. So. Again, this is number five for us. The first year was silver and we've received gold every since. You have to have silver one year. So this is the first year that we've received the plus criteria. But thank you very much for allowing us to share our award with you. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> our EMS folks, um, it, seem, it seems like there's an award or commendation every month and we're certainly proud and appreciative of what you do. Uh, at this time, we move to informal public comments. I do not have any cards that have been submitted um, tonight, so we will now go to old business. Um, we have one item, which is the non-emergency franchise renewal for American Transmed, and we're happy to have Jimmy Lentz with us to discuss that. All right, good evening. Uh, according to general statute, the franchise ordinance has to be read at two consecutive commissioners meeting. This is the second of um, those meetings. The franchise ordinance of the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners granting a franchise to operate a non-emergency ambulance service to American Transmed. Whereas Cabarrus County regulates the provision of vehicles for hire in Article 82 of the Cabarrus County Code of Ordinances and North Carolina General Statute 153A-250, including franchises for non-emergency ambulance services and whereas applications to provide those services were solicited according to the standards defined in section 82-52 of the ordinance. And whereas county staff has reviewed these applications, sought input from state office of emergency services, contacted references for the prospective service providers and considered other information related to equipment and performance. And whereas the board of commissioners have held a hearing as required section by section 82, dash five three on the ordinance. And whereas, based on information submitted by American Transmed and information submitted at the hearing, the Board of Commissioners made the following findings. A, the public necessity and convenience requires the proposed ambulance service. B, each such ambulance is required, it's, and its required equipment have been identified by the state as acceptable for the type of franchise requested. C, American Transmed and its officers or partners are responsible persons to conduct or work in the proposed business. D, only duly certified emergency medical technicians are employed as operators in attendance by American Transmed for the non-emergency service franchise. E, all other requirements of Article, Article 82 and all other applicable laws and ordinance have been met. Now, therefore, the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners resolves that the Board of Commissioners grants a franchise to American Transmed for the operation of non-emergency ambulance or service for the period of July 17, 2018 through June 30, 2021. The terms of this franchise shall include the following. The geographic boundary of this franchise shall be the entirety of the county. Any change in ownership or management of American Transmed shall terminate the franchise and shall require a new application and new franchise award. The franchise may not be sold, assigned, mortgaged, or otherwise transferred without the approval of the county and finding of conformance with all requirements of Article 82. The terms of Section 82-57 of the ordinance shall be included in the franchise agreement as they relate to termination, suspension, or revocation. The Board of Commissioners authorize the county manager to negotiate and execute the franchise agreement with American Transmed, not inconsistent with this ordinance after drafting by the county attorney. All righty, thank you, sir. Okay, as Mr. Lentz indicated, this is the second reading of this franchise agreement. Uh, so at this time, I would entertain a motion to adopt the franchise ordinance of the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners granting 
a franchise to operate non-emergency ambulance service to American Transmed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to our consent agenda, which of course consists of items that we have already discussed at our work session earlier this month. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. That motion passes, and we move to new business. Uh, first, we have from Planning and Development, Harrisburg Area Land Use Plan update and public hearing, and we are happy to have Susie Morris with us tonight. Good evening. I'm pleased to present to you this evening the update to the Harrisburg Area Land Use Plan. As you know, Cabarrus County and the town of Harrisburg uh, have partnered for several years to plan for the Harrisburg planning area. That plan was last updated in 2010. We partnered in 2017 to review and update the existing plan. As part of that process, an advisory committee was formed to oversee the process and to provide input and direction to staff, as well as to the consultants that were working on the project. Cabarrus County had three representatives on the committee and Harrisburg had three representatives as well. Uh, Commissioner Kiger also participated in the process as the Planning and Zoning Commission liaison. The project provided multiple opportunities for public input, including in-person engagement sessions and online survey opportunities. And because of uh, town and staff's use of social media and Channel 22 and promoting the plan, there were close to 200 in-person contacts at public meetings and over 450 online uh, survey responses. Using the input in the area analysis, a draft plan was uh, formed and that final draft was presented at a joint meeting of the Cabarrus County Planning and Zoning Commission and the Town of Harrisburg Planning and Zoning Commission on May 16th of 2018. The Town of Harrisburg Planning and Zoning Board voted that night to make a recommendation to their elected officials for approval of the draft plan. And Harrisburg's Town Council voted to adopt the land use plan on June 11th, 2018. The Cabarrus County Planning and Zoning Commission voted at the June 12th, 2018 meeting <coughs> to forward the draft land use plan to the Board of Commissioners for final consideration. So here we are this evening. Um, and you will need to hold a public hearing. We did go over the plan in detail at the work session, but I'd be happy to answer or address any questions that uh, you may have after having a chance to review the document after that meeting as well. Okay, any questions for Ms. Morris? All right, okay, we'll call the public hearing to order and invite anyone to the podium that would like to speak on the Harrisburg Area Land Use Plan update. <coughs> okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. And at this time, do I hear a motion from the board regarding this land use plan update? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adopt the update to the Harrisburg Area Land Use Plan. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you. It sounds like a lot of work went into that and a lot of effort to, to get the public involved in the process. So we appreciate that. Okay, we move now to appointments to boards and committees. First, we have appointments to the Early Childhood Task Force Advisory Board. Uh, you have all received a list of all of those. Uh, in June, the board adopted a resolution establishing the Early Childhood Task Force Advisory Board. Since then, applications have been received from qualified individuals uh, members are requested to be appointed in staggered terms, including exemptions to the appointment policy as indicated on the roster. Um, the resolution creating the board provided for 15 members 
It is also requested to increase that number as needed. Uh, it's a fairly lengthy list that you all have before you. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to revise the membership of the Early Childhood Task Force Advisory Board to add members as needed and appoint individuals to the advisory board in staggered terms as indicated on the attached roster, including exceptions to the appointment policy as indicated. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So I, I think somewhere I saw an application that came in from a, a Ms. Aristi, I think was the last name. And I thought it was on the list that came through the email, but I don't see it on this list. Does that ring a bell to anyone else? It does. It does. I think not. it was a last. It was a late application, and the list had already been generated by okay. Angela. So, so can since she we be? can add members yeah. at any time, um, we have to, a meeting Friday and a meeting in two weeks to discuss the. Um, organization of the group and so at our next month meeting we can you know put her on put it on the agenda again okay i don't think that's a problem okay Thanks. okay thank you any other discussion if not all in favor please say aye let's see we did get the motion yes, yes. please say aye. aye uh i'll oppose no that motion passes uh and we move to appointments for the juvenile crime prevention council at the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council's June 20th meeting, the council voted to recommend Etta Downs, Jamika LaFranc, and Terry Wise to fill the at-large and substance abuse professional vacancies on the council. Uh, they have included a letter of recommendation that's included in your agenda. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint Etta Downs to the JCPC as an at-large representative for a two-year term ending September 30th, 2020. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes and would then entertain a motion to appoint Jamika LaFranc to the JCPC as an at-large representative for a two-year term ending June 30th, 2020. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And would now entertain a motion to appoint Terry Wise to the JCPC as a substance abuse professional representative for a two-year term ending June 30th, 2020. Move. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes, and we move to appointments to the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. Evelyn Miller's initial term on the advisory committee expired in February. She is interested in continuing to serve on this board. She also serves on the Hume Home and Community Care Block Grant Committee, an exception to the service on multiple boards provision of the appointment policy would be needed for her. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to reappoint Evelyn Miller to the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending February 28, 2021, including an exception to the services on multiple boards provision of the appointment policy. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. <clears throat> that motion passes. And we move to the Library Board of Trustees. Uh, Martha Dobson and Candelaria leave us terms as Mount Pleasant and Kannapolis representatives on the Library Board of Trustees ends on July 31st, 2018. Uh, neither Ms. Dobson nor Ms. Lavis wish to serve another term. Uh, we have been requested to remove them from the roster 
and I think they will be coming back to us later with recommendations to fill those positions. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Martha Dobson and Candelaria Lavis from the Library Board of Trustees roster and thank them for their services. So moved. Have a motion and a second in discussion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we go to the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority. Uh, Troy Taylor has resigned from his seat on the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority. The Cabarrus County Tourism Authority Board of Directors has met and is nominating Jay White to fill the unexpired term ending on June 30th, 2019. A letter in that regard is included in the agenda. At this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Troy Taylor from the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority roster and thank him for his service. So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. I would now entertain a motion to appoint Jay White, seat number 12, to the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority to complete an unexpired term ending June 30th, 2019. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Uh, we move now to reports for informational purposes. Uh, and at this time, we're open to receive updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to municipalities or on various boards or committees. Does anyone have updates they would like to report? Okay, hearing none, do I do we have any general comments that any board members would like to make at this time? Okay, we do have need of a closed session tonight. So at this time I would entertain a motion to go into closed session to discuss pending litigation and economic development issues per North Carolina General Statute 143. Dash 318, 11, 1, 3, and 4. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes, and we are now in closed session. Thank you. <laughs> 